Um, as I mentioned to you earlier, I absolutely loved this book. Um, a lot of dimensions to it. Um, I will say, I this is one book I wish everyone in the room had actually read before coming. <laughs> I think this would be the perfect book club book because of the topics that it covers. And so while that introduces us to two characters we're going to talk about here, there is so much more. And I think it opens pathways to these really dynamic conversations. And so what I'd love to do is hear from you on how you would describe the story. Well, this I can talk about how it started and then mm -hmm. what it became. Yes, <laughs> because, because that would be awesome. Because kind of two different, well, several different things. It's these different components that came together. Um, the absolute genesis beginning of the story is based on something that I experienced. It's not my story. It's not my story. It's not my story. I don't, I don't do roadkill. Um, but, uh, so uh, when, I, when I first started to write it, I wrote about 10 pages and gave it to a fellow writer and she said, oh my god, you're this is like you're yelling. <laughs> like everything happened in 10 pages. So what I had to do was I had to find a way to make it a story that <laughs> had a little bit more, you know, valence to it and boom, 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 this is what happened. Um, so then the next element that came into the story was uh, seeing women on road crews that generally just held the stop signs. And I did the thing that most writers do is we go, what if? What if this woman wasn't just a sign holder? What if she was down and dirty? What kind of a woman would that be? And how yes. would she handle this particular situation that happened to me? Quite differently, but also kind of the same. So those were the, the two main elements that uh, went into the story. Um, what is the story about? It's about... So this isn't a huge secret because you find out pretty soon in the first chapter that she finds out that she has cancer mm -hmm. and so um the journey that i went on and she goes on in quite a different way than i did was uh, believing that it's somehow payback that something that she did or was or had done uh was uh was the reason for this manifestation of disease in her body and so um that's the journey of her pushing back against every, and not knowing why, but really pushing back against any um, allopathic or you know traditional healing methods um, and, until uh, the, the thing that we can't talk about. We can't talk about. <laughs> so we are gonna skirt around a lot of little pieces here because I will say there does, there's a, a this beautiful lullaby that you heard in the beginning introducing and then something happens. And so we don't want to give that away because it does then take the book. Yeah, that the, the thing that you're talking about happens quite far in, yeah. but mostly it's her journey of trying to figure out what to do about the cancer, why she's got it, and uh, and fighting against everybody who has a suggestion on what she should do, <laughs> which I did. And fighting against her past. Yes, yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's a very trauma-informed, and that part's not me. But, um, yeah, so sh her her issue is is this trauma that happened that she doesn't even think is trauma there's there's that piece that she doesn't think it's trauma and then there is the one oh that, the, the fire she, yeah the fire that which she is can described really identify. in the very first chapter yeah. that um that both and she, and that's what she feels responsible for her um her house burnt down when she was 11 and her father or her baby sister was killed because she kicked her out of bed and she was hiding in the closet and, and then the father went back in to get the child and he died of smoke inhalation. So that's the burden that she's carrying with her and feels like, well, maybe I should just die because this is, no, it's time, it's my turn. So, yeah. And the survivor's guilt that goes. Very much so, yeah. Yeah, and so then the, the cancer plays, that's is right. this my punishment? Yeah. 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 So it is a complex story, but what I love about it is how you deal with the traumas and the conversations that I think you and I talked earlier about, the importance of having the conversations around whether it's early trauma, and in this case, even second generation trauma. 
that's being passed down. Sometimes if the mother as well has gone through it, yeah. that trauma can be passed down. Yeah, yeah, and she essentially loses her mother because her mother doesn't really she, want to be on the planet either. She's still yeah. alive, but barely. Yeah. Yeah. And so there's almost an emotional abandonment that comes into play. Exactly, which is why she falls into the arms of, of her abuser. Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. So, anybody intrigued now? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it really takes on, like, just, I found the book, I described it as both heartbreaking and heartwarming. Mm -hmm. And just because of the journey she goes on. And so you did speak to it's not a memoir. So, but you do choose from real life, yes. your life. Uh, I guess maybe from a writer's perspective, how do you pick and choose those pieces? It's a really good question. <laughs> I don't know if I have, have an answer. An answer. I that. think it's when I come to a certain place in the book and then, you know, I, I wonder, is there is there a place in my life that, you know, is, it, it, it will come. Oh, I can put this here. I can put this here. Yeah. Um, and, you know, as you say, a lot of it is, is definitely made up. Yeah, it's beautifully <laughs> woven in. Um, and I'm not sure it reads like a memoir, but just having done the, the research on you, that was kind of like, wow, it's brave. I find it really brave. And you didn't hate her? So I want to talk about, I, okay, here we go. We're going to talk about Brett. I love this character. Oh, you did? Okay. I love this character. Of people just want to slap her. True confession. <laughs> First 40 pages wanted to just go, come on, snap out of it. And then you follow her journey. And I will tell you that when I finished, I gave it a hug. Aww. I gave it a hug. There's not a lot of books that I hug at the end. I gave it a hug. I know this sounds really corny and whatever. When you go on this journey with her, it's beautiful. So I sometimes, as we talk about a book with trauma and there is, if you're triggered, it, this could be, but stay with it because where she goes is incredible, really incredible. I may be giving too much away there. What was your inspiration no, for writing her? No, because you want to know that you, yeah, you, you, you want to know that it's gonna, you know, we're not gonna end. I'm gonna tell you how it ends. I'm gonna tell you how it ends. But know that it, it will take you to a place that's really important. Yeah. What was your inspiration for her? I think. Um, that is a really good question because um, when I when I was looking for comparable titles when I was um, submitting the book, I was trying to find um, unlikable female and <laughs> you got a <laughs> <laughs> um, Because I think what she is is sort of the darker side of me that nobody sees because I'm ah. a very positive person, uh, very optimistic and enthusiastic and she is really you know my dark shadow I, I think so I have to respond to that in that so many people I've been privileged to have the conversation about trauma with many of the behaviors you've covered not all like not everyone responds the same way but they many respond this way and so it's so true to form it's interesting that you say she's in the background there she's a, the dark side a lot of people, I think there's those pieces in there. Not well, everyone. Well, you're making me think because because I didn't have a trauma anywhere close to what she no. had. But giving her that gave me the opportunity to really bring out those dark yeah. those dark shadows. Yeah, no, it's beautifully done. And if I'm just going to like go through this page, it looks like a lot. I promise I won't. It was my take on the journey. Because you had asked, did I hate her? I started off, as I said, not my friend. But I just came to love her. And so she too was a writer uh, in the book. She liked to write um, when she wasn't, you know, working her road job. And she writes in the beginning like this. I am this one who stays above it all. I stay safe, not letting anyone all the way in. I'm too cool to care, but I'm smoking hot. You can't come close. You can come close, but not too close. I'm dangerous you'll get burned or frozen out. But then as Mel goes on her journey, I loved the way that she eventually, near the end, that she writes, these are the lies I have told myself. It was my fault. I killed my family. Dylan loved me. I can't bear children. 
but those become her lies. And I wrote a sentence that just says, it was like she put the past behind her and became in the now where the living are. Right. That's so interesting. <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> I'll, I'll let you have that line. <laughs> but it was, I felt like she went through her, in the book, there's a back and forth between the now and the past. So there's this back and forth. But I noticed there was this sort of build of where she, where the real Brett shows up. And not the real Brett, but the strength. And then all of a sudden the past disappears in the book. And she's here now. Was that intentional? Was that? No, I think a lot of writing is, is intuitive, to okay. be absolutely honest. Yeah. You know, I, I think, you know, I wrote it and then I'm like, okay, this goes here, this goes. I don't always know exactly why you're doing it. Yeah. I, I say you, but he, I don't no, know. No. It's like it's in yeah. there, that ends up working. But the the passage that you read, but what she wrote is um, is is definitely her belief that she's tough and and that that will keep her safe. You're not and getting in. You're not getting in. Yeah. And uh, and then, but yeah, I didn't remember that she wrote that in the end. That to the like, end. These are the lies I told myself. Yeah. And yeah, this is basically her journey of finding out what the living do. Like how how, how can I live? Yeah. And, and love and you know let it in um so yeah that's that's yeah can can I have that? That? That's really <laughs> I'll let you have that I just it really was the journey is it odd when someone interprets your book I have to ask that because I was I layered this on here going wow look at this <laughs> It's it's enlightening. I have to say that you know I finished this book in 2016, so yes. and and I've read it over several times. But because I wrote it, and you know I think I gloss over yeah yeah that 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 that. And then uh, in almost every interview, someone brings up something. And I'm like, oh really? Oh, and you know and and has an insight that I wasn't aware of or or had forgotten about. Yeah. That's it's and so that part's really fun. And okay. thank you. <laughs> fun to see how somebody would interpret your work yeah. you know as an artist you kind of go oh, that's what they saw and probably if every one of us in the room read it would probably see something else that they connected to well it surprised me the the feedback that i've been getting is how many people relate to her because i think you know she's really messed up yeah. um but it's shocking how many women particularly and also the other thing that's really shocked me is men like this book well, I can see why it is not the I am woman, hear me roar. Well, the There's, guys are nice in there, too. And the guys are good. Dylan, well. <laughs> we don't like Dylan. There's but, a couple that, yeah. But Cole, everybody loves Cole. Everybody loves Mel. So I and think they're good guys. They're good guys. Yeah. yeah. And speaking of Mel, let's talk a little bit, um, and then we'll, we'll sort of move on to the writing piece, but just a little bit about Mel, your inspiration for him, because, boy, there's a, a good connection. Yeah. I mean, my, my son is Ojibwe, and my ex Ojibwe, and so for 30 years I've been, um, you know, involved in that community and that culture. And um, most of the things that Mel says, either my ex said, or Mel is uh, named after my, my my son's uncle who passed away a number of years ago. Um, and Webster is also one of his uncles. I just took everybody's name that I know <laughs> within the story because you know they're good names. Um, so. Yeah, and, and most of the things that come out of his mouth are things that I actually heard. I mean, I didn't make anything up there. Um, so it's it's important to me, and I, you know, I was very careful. One of the things that Brett does is she projects um, this wisdom onto this character of Mel. And that's what I did. Yeah. That's definitely what I did when I first met my husband. Is like, oh well, you're indigenous. You 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 have the secret to the universe, you know. And um, and actually, uh, they're just ordinary people with their own particular history. So I, in a way, I kind of wanted to show that that um, this is an ordinary man. The one thing about him that. Uh, works for the novel is that he's pretty much the only one who doesn't want anything from her yes so yes. she just gives him everything and yes. checks this wisdom onto him yeah. so which is you know something that i absolutely did um and found out that you know that might not be the best way to approach someone um the line my favorite line in the entire book is um when 
oh, so, so there's this story in the book that you will, if you buy the book, you will read it, uh, about skunks. And um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it, it's a story that came down through my son's family, where in at the time of the Spanish flu, uh, his great great I don't know how many greats they have a lot of generations and uh, but she told uh, her husband to go trap a skunk and made a tea out of the juice and um, nobody in that family died so uh, where am I going with this? <laughs> well, it's a healing tea. Favorite line. So, oh, favorite thank you. Favorite line. Yes, thank you. I knew there was a point to this story. I'm just getting sort of the story. Of <laughs> so when when Mel tells Brett this story about his great great grandmother, um, she, she says to him, "So was your great great grandmother some kind of medicine woman?" And mm. he says, "All women are medicine women." And the, I heard that, and I just, that's my favorite line in the entire book. <laughs> the nurture. That. Yeah. yeah. Just all women are. Yeah, it's women. beautiful. And I also found his language, and I don't know whether you meant this to come up, but it may be another one of how did I interpret it. You would inject the Ojibwe language throughout, where whether she was practicing to say a word, it was a prayer. And so there's a cadence in the book where there's a, a tension builds. And then she starts to practice these words, and I found my body came out of its tension, and then the story would build, and then there'd be a few more words. I found the language relaxing. Wow. Isn't that, I don't know whether that was an intent, but for me, it just struck me, again, That's my nice. interpretation of it. I love that. Yeah, it's, it's great cadence on it. So now I'm gonna to come to another topic. We're gonna to completely do a left turn and feel comfortable to say you don't want to answer this question I'll set you up with that there is another topic that's covered and I, I'll just briefly it is about grooming child molestation that I won't get into the whole piece of it but it's there the story is there and I have to say I learned so much of it about it in and how you handle the beginning something I didn't realize before in how what she thought happened to her right that was just an education. So you are in, where I'm going with this is not about the book. You, you are in Alice Monroe country. And some of us here have been involved with our Alice Monroe festival. Mm. And so clearly this year with Andrea's, you know, speaking her voice yeah. and coming forward, we've all been, you know, caught like, you know, shocked um, and learning how to feel about this. Um, how about you? Do you have any comment you could make on that? Or? Well, yeah, I mean, it's a very different kind of story here, it is, whereas yes, the, that there was, um, yeah, she was absolutely compliant as a child because he was, the, this older cousin was the only one who paid her any attention and made her feel good. So she carries that story as a love affair throughout her life, that that was her first love was this cousin yeah. of hers. It's very different. Very different. Um, but the one thing I will say about the whole um, Andrea, Alice, etc. story is that they're all guilty. All of they're them. They're all guilty. Except for her. The, the, the father, the stepfather, the father sent her back. Just at the, the, the journalists who didn't address it, the biographer who didn't talk about it. Yes. All of them. It just goes right down the line. Yeah. So I think, I'll only say that I think it's really important I mean, you know, thank you, Andrea, for finally, you know, being able to break, break through that membrane that keeps us from knowing these things so that hopefully it'll stop. Yes. Yeah. And I think, well, I guess we're all trying to come to terms. Does the art, is the art tainish, tainted with the artist? Well, what Monroe's Monroe's books did. Did you yeah. see what they did? That every sale from Al any Alice Monroe books is yes. going to go to uh, the gatehouse. Yes, the gatehouse. Yeah. So I yes. thought that was brilliant. Absolutely. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, I don't know what to do about that. Whether you know, I can watch Woody Allen films or yeah, you know, any you know, these the, the great art. Even Picasso, yeah. he was a you know, he wasn't a nice person. No. No. I, so just, I don't I don't know. I yeah, mean, it's hard to answer and that. And the thing one. is her stories deal with these issues, which is so ironic. Yeah. Ironic and yet still makes it hard to read now. Yeah. 
to go back and read. I just wanted to get your <laughs> feel on that. And I thought, My expert opinion. Oh, we didn't talk about because there's a big theme in the book, and it would give too much of the story away to, to go down that path. It comes pretty early. It comes pretty early. Yeah. But then where she goes later is... It's, anyway, just know it goes magnificent. It is... <laughs> it, yeah. And it, how, how, you say, how can that happen? You'll see. The story is, is very brave. So now we're going to talk a bit about your process in writing. Is that okay? We have a few minutes here to... Uh, um, how did you finally get the book out? Oh, God. Because I know there's a journey there. Oh, yeah. It's just... Oh, my goodness. So um, I, I had... Um, such a long story but I uh, basically every agent I queried some of them very nice Hillary McMahon at Westwood was amazing she even read the book twice after I had done some editing uh, couldn't get excited enough about it um, Carly Waters this was 15 years ago or whatever and she was very nice as well I don't think that she would have been as personable now because she's, she's <laughs> big stuff now um, and uh, yeah, I just, so I got some nice, <laughs> nice rejections. Um, then I uh, subscribed to a, a service called Writer's Relief that gave me 50 agents through the U.S. and how to query them, who to query, blah, blah, blah. I did that. I got an agent in New York. She took the book. A year later, she couldn't sell it. We parted ways. <laughs> um, I, uh, what's her name? There was a, one of the big publishers that accepted manus unsolicited manuscripts, was very excited about it, asked for the full manuscript, very excited, and then the big five swallowed that one and the book mm. fell through the cracks. It just goes on and on. And then finally, uh, a friend of mine, a uh, writer friend said, why don't you try Regal House? Uh, it's a feminist, two women run it in um, Raleigh, and uh, you don't need uh, an agent and they took it, but they, they took it in October of 2021 and it was published in March of 2024. So it was a long road. It's a long road, but one that you really stuck with. And I have to say, you have a pretty significant birthday coming up soon. Yes. Yeah, and, and this is your debut. So for those of us who think we have a novel in us and yes. we haven't got it out yet, what would be your advice be? Yeah, just you know, well, it, you know, you gotta have the you gotta have the passion. You gotta you gotta love what you do. Yeah. Um, I my my dream was just to be traditionally published because it's you know it's not the kind of book that would go with a self publishing route. Um, you know, it's not genre. So I knew I had to have a traditional publisher, and yeah, I mean, I was working on other things at the same time as I kept sending this one out. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's. Um, uh, right now, the book I'm working on also has some of these on? some of these same themes. Only, um, yeah, it's a, it's a story of a, of a, of a, of a you know really re well respected man who was accused of molesting a babysitter, yeah. and that's a choreographer woman that's his wife, and the story's told from her point of view, and she's like caught between loyalty, and so it's much more yeah. to this theme, uh, you know. I, I, because he says he didn't do it, so she's trying to be loyal, but, you know, her body, she's, she's body-oriented, she's a, a choreographer, and her body is like, she's fighting with her body. Anyway, um, the thing is that uh, House of Anansi has a call out, it's only during the month of August, and they're BIPOC, marginalized, and older debut Authors. Oh, there you go. So I'm trying to get it finished so that I can get it in before the end of August. The end oh, of the month. that's awesome. That's awesome. And you have Write Your Way In. Can you tell us a little bit about Write Your Way In? Just yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm Amherst Writers and Artists workshop, Writing Workshop Facilitator, which is a wonderful, I mean, I could talk forever about the process. It's a very supportive it's actually what every scene in this pretty much every scene in this book started in a workshop an AWA workshop not that oh, I was facilitating wow. but um, it's so it's you, we're given prompts but the prompts are wide open you can take them any way you want you can write a poem you can write an essay you can feed it into something that you're working on and um, and the feedback because it's freshly generated work in these in these workshops um, the feedback is only what's working what's strong 
um, you know, what's memorable. So I just found it absolutely remarkable because it gave me the impetus to, to I, I had had a, a long, very dry spell where I wasn't writing, I was doing other things and had lost my confidence. And I went to one of these workshops and went, oh, I can do this, I can yeah. do this. And um, yeah, so now I was um, certified in 2014 and I've been leading the workshops and taking people on international retreats. and. Um, yeah, I just love it, and the, the love one of the one of the precepts um, of the of the work is that every facilitator uh, must write along, take the same risks yeah. as those that they're facilitating, uh, which means that five so times good. a week for two hours, I'm writing whether I want oh to or not. God, it's, so good. Good. it's like, it's like yes. I don't know, I don't know, I don't want to write. Well, you have to, and you yeah. have to also read and take the same risks. So that, awesome. that's brilliant. It really keeps me uh, in my chair. And oh, I love it. So these cards are at the front. <laughs> um, You'll get one. People. I love it. So I, I do have to leave time for our guests. Yeah. If, any questions? Yeah. 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 Oh, sorry. How do you think the, the Humber Writing School was helpful and useful for you? Well, I was very fortunate because Donna Morrissey was my mentor. <laughs> she's, she's just rocking. We're BFFs now. <laughs> um, she did something that most of them don't do. In fact, I, I invited her to do some workshops in Aurelia, which is my town. And she came and uh, I told herself up in my guest room and read my entire manuscript. <laughs> yeah, she was awesome. But um, It was a hostage situation. Yeah, it was totally a hostage situation. <laughs> <laughs> come, come. Um, but generally, what they will give feedback on is up to 200 pages, and um, it just depends on your on your mentor. Um, hmm. Some people say mm, not so much yeah. that they haven't really been helpful. Uh, one of the people that's been hosting these events with me is Richard Scrimger, and oh. um, yeah. <laughs> He, he rocks. He's amazing. Uh, we have a great history. Uh, my other life before this was, um, before body work or whatever, was uh, I was a manager of a fine dining in uh, Toronto and he was my waiter. Oh my gosh! So he says, well, when Susan tells me to do something, I just do it. <laughs> so he shows up. Uh, but he's, he's a mentor and I think, um, you know, he does write for young people, but um, he's really brilliant. He has a brand new book out called Your Story Matters, and it's kind of a how-to book. It's for young people. It's written kind of in his jaunty, funny voice, but it's brilliant, and awesome. I think it's I think it definitely crosses the so genres. Good. So it's a it's a pig and a poke with the Humber School. Okay. It's a lot of money and yeah. 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 Paul, is yeah. the workshop that you do uh, women only, or is it oh no, oh, okay. but. Generally speaking, mm -hmm. it's women who show up. I have a few men that, that mm -hmm. show up, but it's mostly mostly women. And I mean, COVID was a real gift because I used to do one evening a week and one full day a month. Mm -hmm. And now I'm doing five and six workshops a week online. So nice. yeah, it's really it's really bumped bumped up the practice. So, yeah. Thank so. you. Yeah. Anyone else want to? So um, I read your book and uh, I got about 25 pages through it and I was completely frustrated with her. I, I couldn't get around her dark side and uh, she was so intelligent yet so flawed <laughs> and it, how do you enjoy writing a character like that is it hard to do to, to have both sides of it? somebody so intelligent yet does <laughs> really stupid <laughs> <laughs> not that hard <laughs> A lot of women who can relate. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing is, yeah, I mean, you know, how many people say, oh, I have this problem. Well, I'm going to fix it. That wouldn't be much of a story. But um, the truth is, I kept trying as I'm writing. I'm trying. Okay, so now, come on. And she wouldn't. Like, I didn't mind sound a bit woohoo, but I, I, it's like, I didn't know. Okay, so, but if she does that, then the story ends. So I've got to, I, you know, I've got to make her more. And, but I, I did have one of my uh, friends in a, in a writing um, retreat that I did, it's a, which helped me actually. He said, so why is she so bent on dying? Why does she want to die so bad? Yeah. And, I, and that's when I had to kind of expand it and give her a reason for that. So, yeah. So, yeah, it's a good question. A good like, yeah, I don't know. I, I think I'm intelligent, but I make some pretty stupid mistakes. <laughs> 
Okay. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Just a little bit of Bayfield swag. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Take back home. Thank you.